and enjoy yourself in the presence of God. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Please put your hands together as we welcome the celebration. Pleasures forevermore. With nobody, I've never heard or seen 
when anybody encounters the presence of God and stay the same. We are always changed in his presence. He always asks to us. He always increases us. Hallelujah. And then he removes from us those things that ought not to be there. That is to say, when we truly worship the Lord, we are perfected. It's a journey of perfection. Hallelujah. So that is my desire tonight. That through this worship meeting, you and I will live here perfected. We won't live the way we came. We won't live with the weights we came with. But we'll drop them at the feet of the master. Hallelujah. And take up his glory on us. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much. I want to welcome you, Sister Raphia. Please put your hands together for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be coming on soon. I'll let you know. Thank you. She's a wonderful worshiper. I don't want to call her a singer. Worshiper. There's a difference between worshippers and singers. She's a worshiper. In the kingdom, we are worshippers. We are not singers because singers entertain. But we worship to minister to the Lord and then to the people by the help of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So we are worshippers. And the scripture tells me in John chapter 4, from verse 23 down, when Jesus was speaking, he said, The Father is seeking true worshippers. Yes. He didn't say he's seeking for true singers. Are we together? God is seeking true worshippers, not true singers. So at the end of the day, when it comes to worship, God is not looking for your voice or your lips, he's looking for your heart. Because the heart is the man. The heart is the place of worship. So God is seeking our heart tonight. So I want to, I want to believe that we're all worshippers in the house today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're a worshiper, can you put up your hands? Wave them to the Lord. Let him see that you're here tonight to give him worship. Not to hear Pamela sing. Because my voice may just not be good. But my heart may be good to the Lord. And that is what matters. Hallelujah. So Father, we honor you tonight. We honor you tonight, Lord. I honor you tonight, my Father. You are the reason I live. In you, I live, move, and have my being. Without you, I will not be here. I'm not ashamed to talk about you to the whole world. I'm not ashamed because you are the one who saved me. You did not only save me, you sealed me. And you did not only seal me, you called me. You chose me. You appointed me. And you anointed me. I am less qualified by all human standards to be your minister. But Lord, you chose me by your mercy. By your mercy and your grace. So tonight I give it all to you, Lord. Tonight I just give it all to you, Lord. I don't care who is watching. I don't care who doesn't like you, Jesus. You're all that matters to me right now. And right now you're in front of me. You're all that I see. You're all that I see. You're all that I see. You are all that I see. So I want you to know that this is all about you. This is not all about you. It's not about fame. It's not about followership. It's not about a sound. It's not about the people. It's not about the lights or the cameras. Lord, it's all about you, Lord. Because you are light. Because you are light. You are the light that lighted up men. Without you, there's no light. You are the source of all things. You are the father of all light. In you, there's no darkness. In you, there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. All blessings come from you, the father of all light. Lord, we honor you tonight as your people, as your holy ecclesia, as your chosen ones, as a ministry, Basket Lombard International, that has put this all together. Father, we give you tonight. We lift up our sacrifice of worship. We lift up ourselves tonight. Not the songs that we sing, but ourselves unto you, Lord. We return, oh God. It is the worship of the return. It is the worship of the rededication. It is the worship of the return. So tonight we return, oh God. Because only those who have returned can truly worship. We cannot worship in disobedience. We can worship in a place of disobedience. We can only worship from a standpoint of obedience where we have been found. So tonight, Lord, I call you Sweet Holy Ghost. You are the one who returns back to Jesus. I ask you tonight to come and have your way. I ask you tonight to come and have your way. I ask you to know and come and have your way. I ask you to know and come and have your way. I ask you to know and come and return us. Come and return us. Come and return us to Jesus. Come and return us to what you demand us. Come and return us to where we demand us. Come and return us to our souls. Come and return us to relationship. Come and return us to intimacy. Come and return us to friendship. Worship. But there's something called a false worship and a true worship.
worship. We don't want to be false worshippers. I don't want to be a false worshipper, Lord. I did not give up the world and all that I gave up to be a false worshipper. But I want to be a true worshipper. So tonight, oh God, you are the life of worship. True worship comes from you. True worship is inspired by you, Holy Ghost. So I ask you tonight that you make us true worshipers. Make us true worshipers. Make us true worshipers. A Jacob generation that seeks the praise of the Lord. That seeks the praise of the Lord. Not just the hand of the Lord, but that seeks the praise of the Lord. That we may know the Lord and that we may abide in Him and He in us. Lord, I ask you tonight. Lord, I ask you to inspire true worship tonight. I'm only a vessel. I can't do it except you help me, sweet Holy Spirit. You are my Ebenezer, my most intimate friend. You are the one who helps me to do the things that I do. You are the anointing of my life. You are the grace in me. You are the power at work in me. You are the treasure in this heaven vessel. You are the sweetness of my life. You are the taste of my life. You are the flavor of my life. And you are the savour of my life. And you are the light upon this candle. You are the oil burning in my lamp. So tonight, I just want you to know that you are all that matters to me. After all said and done, Jesus, you are all that matters, Lord. You are all that matters, Jesus. So I just pray tonight is my desire, Lord, that you ignite in us a fresh hunger and passion for you for righteousness, for holiness, and return us to the place of obedience. For many times we do stray away, but tonight, let tonight be a night of return. Are you in the first of me? But everyone in this room, and everyone watching online, that you return us to the place of obedience, to the place of true worship. Tonight I ask that you reignite in us hunger and passion for you, Jesus. Whenever we have drunk, Let the hands of your blessing 
You are the way, you are the truth, you are the 
Jesus is my everything. Jesus is my everything. A lot of things have come against me. A lot of things have come against me. But when I look to my right, to my side, to my front and back and the center, all I see is Jesus Christ. And that is why I gave him my life. And I gave him my all. And that is why I'm still giving him myself all night. Because he's my own.
He is consistent. Yes, Lord. And that's why we trust Him. And that's why our hope is anchored on Him. Because He never fails. I'd like to invite another minister in music to worship and take us even beyond where we have gone so far. Please join your hands and welcome.
I want to pray for you. Okay, sing your song.
we are still standing. We think we are still there. It still takes the love of God to call us back. To draw our attention back that, hey, daughter, you're strained. Hey, son, you're strained. So the Lord said to me, Pamela, rededicate yourself to me as a living sacrifice, as a vessel totally sold out to me, so that I can use you as a vessel of glory on earth. And so tonight, Lord, I have decided to follow I'm calling to be my worshiper. And when I heard it, it sounded like noise in my ears. And I said, no, 
It's as if I'm standing here. I just want to be with you, my Lord. And at the tail end of your voice,
I decree that from tonight, your music moves Amen. from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. In accordance, O God, to your instructions. And therefore, sanctify this water. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And as this water is released on you, welcome to a new beginning. Welcome to a new season. Welcome to a higher prophetic In the name of Jesus. Now what you say will fall to the ground. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Therefore, Lord, I anoint your daughter.
even those of you watching us on Facebook, our admonition to you this evening is to hold on to the King. Is to hold on to Jesus. Every other thing will fail. Only Jesus never fails. Only the kingdom of God never fails. So we admonish you tonight, even as you leave this place tonight. If you've been putting your trust in things, in people and in systems, we want to say to you tonight, let your trust and your anchor be in God. Be in Jesus Christ. Because he never fails. He never fails. He never fails. And as you put your trust and anchor in him tonight, I want to assure you that he will never fail you. Because he has never failed. He will never fail you. Father, we bring your people before you tonight. Both those that are here and those that are watching us on Facebook. Lord, they don't have anywhere to run to. They don't have anyone to run to. You are their helper. No mortal man can help them. Systems of this world cannot help them. So we all come before you, knowing that you are. We just surrender to you, this Lord. I cover this one's present and those ones watching us in your precious blood, my Father. And I ask, oh God, that you go with them tonight, those ones present here. And Father, that you continue ministering to them. Let your spirit minister to them beyond this worship atmosphere. Let them have an encounter with you, O oh God. An encounter that will prove how real you are. Thank you, Abba Father. We declare, O oh God, that from today, even to the 31st of December, your goodness and mercies will follow them. In the name of Jesus. Celebration will follow them. In the name of Jesus. We cut off every bad news. We remove every bad news from your heart. For the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God. Because surely goodness and mercy are following them. Father, we trust you, O God, for your life. And we commit you and we commend them into your evil hands. You who is able to keep them. And we trust you, O oh God, that you will keep them. Father, we thank you. Because joyfully and gloriously, we march into 2021. In victory and in power. Declaring your goodness, even in the land of the living. Lord, we thank you. We are exalted. Father, because they have come tonight to celebrate your daughter, I decree and declare. That celebration will not lack in your life. Yeah. Celebration will not lack in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God who has done it for the celebrant, we will do much more for you beyond your imagination and expectation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, Lord, everyone who is sick in the body, I ask so God that you touch them. And let your healing power destroy every sickness and every disease. For our bodies, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we have been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. Therefore, sickness cannot be in our bodies. Diseases cannot have any power in us. So we thank you tonight for your healing power, even in the atmosphere. And even on those watching us on social media. Thank you, Abba Father. 
be thou exalted, Lord. Even as we go on in thankfulness, in gratitude for what you have done here tonight. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. giving yourself to Jesus to his kingdom and to the king Jesus. make that decision tonight make that decision tonight those of you watching me on Facebook if you're not giving yourself fully totally to the king and his kingdom make that decision tonight and commit yourself to the king he loves you, he wants you and he has the He's the only one that has the best for you. And as you do that, your life will never return to say amen. May God bless you and keep all of us, even as we go back and continue our celebration. I want to wish every one of you in advance a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021. And I know that the God who kept you away from coronavirus, kept you away from sicknesses, is more than able to keep you in 2020. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lastly, I just want to say this. 2021 is a very significant year in the kingdom of God. For this ministry, GKMI, the Lord has said to us we should go out and preach the gospel. So from the second week of January, we'll be hosting across the city and even into villages. The ball is already rolling and God is set to do great things. Please, use this opportunity to prepare yourself and as you get into 2021, become a mobile evangelist. Become a mobile evangelist. Don't wait for your pastor to tell you to evangelize to someone. No. Go out. The commission is for every believer. Matthew 28, 19, 20. Go here, therefore, and preach the gospel. Don't wait for your pastor. Go out and tell someone about the God you believe in, about the kingdom you stand for and you represent. And as you do that, God will bless you. Last week, I just want to share this testimony briefly and then I drop the mic and go. Last week, for those of us that are. Uh, in the in GKMI. I told us that God says we should win 100, 100 souls for me 200, for my wife 200. And I started. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching, evangelizing from Hacho Junction to Tommy. Shop to shop, shop to shop, shop to shop. Last two weeks I started. Last week I continued. I got to a place last week. A Cali. And as I stepped in, and I began to preach, as I was preaching, the young man was crying. You know when a baby is crying and profusely, and he's bringing out water every, from every part of his body. The man broke down and he was weeping, shedding tears. It was so uncontrollable that the man that was sitting with him broke down literally because of what we saw his friend. How he saw his friend. And I led him to Christ and his friend was convinced and they were both led to Christ. I'm saying this to you because there are souls out there. I went, the second place I went to, to minister, after ministry, the woman said to me, oh, pastor, we really needed you. You were like water. We were thirsty and you were like water that came. I said, it's not me. I didn't do anything. I only obey the instruction of my heavenly father. And I know it. There are a lot of people in desperate situations. And all they need is the reassurance of the kingdom. And God wants to use you as the vessel to bring to light where darkness is. To bring to darkness, to bring to light, sorry, where darkness is. So please don't hesitate. Please don't sit down. Go out and tell someone about the good news of the kingdom and the fact that Jesus Christ loves you. And as you do that, God will bless you and you will receive the reward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just want to, first of all, thank you.
appreciate everybody in this room tonight. Thank you for coming. You could have been somewhere else, spending your time, your money, and everything. You could have been with your family, your friends, but you chose to come and celebrate with me as we worship Jesus together. I want you to know that I'm not the only one who has lifted up the sacrifice of worship to the Lord, but every one of us tonight is been lifted up like a memorial before the Lord, and we cannot forget this day. Praise the Lord. So I want to appreciate everybody. I really am grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, you brought worship and life to me again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rafia. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Tony, after now you receive your phone. Your phone. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. You made my day. That was a pleasant surprise. Thank you, Bola. Thank you, Mrs. Nick, our sister. We thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chide. You thank you, Mr. Eva. Thank you, everyone. Thomas, Brad, John, David, for setting up in America. You did so so well. And Joseph, Eve, thank you, everybody. Thomas, thank you so much. Brad Zion. By the help of the Holy Ghost, you put all this together. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, Brother Wilson. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. And our only rewarder is Jesus. Yeah. Even if I give one million naira now, it will, it will finish. But God's blessings never finish. They run over. So I just want to release the blessing of the Lord upon you. This morning, the Lord gave me a word for everyone who will be here today and those online as well. We are 2020 has been very challenging, we all know that. But the truth is 2021 is going to be a harder year. Mm -hmm. But for the signs, he said I'll present my own. Hallelujah. That is why the Lord is sounding the alarm. He said, Tell my people to return to me. Because those that are outside the will of the Lord may be consumed by the flood of 2021. But when you return and you are in him, in his will is safety. So that is the word of the Lord to us tonight. And he gave me the scripture that says, Where there's no vision, my people perish. And the vision is talking about here is not just the vision of giving you uh, dreams at night, you know, or open vision and all of that. It's talking about his word. Because the second part of that scripture says, happy are those who keep his law. That's blessed are those who keep his law. So the Lord is saying to us, we should, we should you know, step further from the place of hearing his word, but to doing his word. The Lord is saying many people, many believers are really not doing the word of the Lord. They speak it, they say it. They go to church, they gather, they hear it, and they go home. They're not living the life. So it aches the heart of Jesus. And it's in the doing that we are blessed. And Jesus said, it's in your doing that you show me that you love me. Because we should also love the Lord. He expects us to love him. He said, when you keep my commandments, you show that you love yes. me. So many of us just is saying, we say we love him with our mouths, but we're not doing his will. So he says, tell my people all over the world, those on social media, you can hear me. That's the word of the Lord to the house, including myself. That's what he said today, offer yourself back to me. Because there are times we get too busy, even with ministry. Ministry is not God. Ministry is God through you, reaching out to people. Mm -hmm. So you can be too busy reaching out to people, doing charity, doing evangelism, and you leave the secret place that matters the most. Ministry to Jesus is what matters the most. Ministry to Him is what matters the most. Because when we minister to Him daily, there we are saved. There He can give you vision. There He can give you an information. There He can give you a revelation. What of your future, of the now, and what is about to come? He can tell you, hey, Pamela, don't do this because if you go there, this is going to happen. But if you're far from your place of ministry to Jesus as a person, you may be caught up with the wind of the world. And he said, because I love my sheep, I love my own, and my own will hear my voice. Go and tell them today that I said they should return to me. I know there are so many who are seeking me, seeking me, but tell them, I want them to have me. Have me so that your joy may be full. It's not enough to talk about Jesus, Jesus. He says, through you, they should see me. We should be like the mirror through which they see Jesus on earth. He said, let your light so shine that the world may see your good works and give glory to the Father. And the truth is, Jesus is saying, not all who say my name are doing my name. And that is why it looks like the church doesn't have power. But we have power. We should have power because we are, we, Jesus is in us. Hallelujah. We have the Holy Ghost. And the kingdom of God is not a word, but a power. Hallelujah. So every believer should be healing the sick, raising the dead, and doing everything that Jesus says we should do in the scripture. As many who believe in my name, they shall heal the sick, they shall raise the dead. It's not meant for the fivefold gifts alone. But the church seems to have narrowed it down to the fivefold. The fivefold is only the spiritual authority over the house. God in the house, shepherd in the house. But the believer as well, you are an inheritance of the Lord and of the Lord. You have the anointing and you should walk in the miraculous. So Jesus is saying to me that it's a time of revival for the church. He said, awaken those who are sleeping. Strengthen those things that are weak. These are the words he's given to me. You know why? Because it's been, it's been prophesied by the prophets of old that in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. Yeah. So if we don't find it back now, 
not be surprised. The grace falling away is already happening. It's already Trust happening. me. Yeah. But it's going to increase from next year upward. A lot is going on in the world. If you're not standing right, if Jesus is not your anchor, they will pull you out. A lot of people are leaving the faith. They're saying, I'm no longer following Jesus. I don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. Why? Because they were not rooted. Because probably they didn't have a revelation or a true encounter of the Lord. Yeah. Maybe they were just led by what they had. Let's go, let's go. We must go beyond what the pastor is preaching and have our own personal revelation of the Lord. That's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Because at, on the last day, Jesus, uh, apostle will not save you. Yes. You won't save the next person. It is what you know that will keep you. It is the Holy Ghost that you know and have that will sustain you. Yes. If you don't have him and I have him, he will sustain me. But what about you? You may fall away. So that's why he said, everybody should know me. Because you're my bride. And I'm coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. That's what Jesus said to you and I. So we should shun every weight that besets us. And begin to pursue after holiness and godliness. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing in this world. There's nothing in this world. The world is failing. Nations, economies are failing. But the kingdom of God is increasing. It's expanding. It's advancing. Praise the Lord. And it says to remind you that persecution is coming. Serious. But only those who have made Jesus their uncle will stand. So this is a day to decide whether you're going to be with the Lord or you're going to be with the world. Because the world is coming for the church. The world is coming for the church. Greatly. Whether we believe it or not, we can't pray something the way it's written. The church will face persecution, but only those who love Jesus. Not those who Jesus loves. Jesus loves the whole world. But not the whole world will be saved. That's the truth. There are those who are already marked for destruction. And there are those who are already sealed. For life eternity with Jesus. So at the end of the day, is your personal testimony, revelation of who Christ is, and your love for him. That is what will make you stand, even in the face of death, and you will say, no, kill me. Because I know that even if I die, I'm going to meet Jesus. This was what the apostles of old caught. That even when they killed them, they crucified them, they roasted them in the fire, they fried them in the oil, they did not deny Jesus. I'm telling you the truth, we are all in the world. From what I see, personal observation, if, if if something terrible were to come right now, a lot of Christians, Christians, I said, Christians, not believers, Christians will just, will, they will run away from, they will just say, who is Jesus? Like Peter. Like Peter denied Jesus. So it, it will take the Holy Ghost in men to say, go go around, you can kill me, I don't care. Mark of the beast, I'm not taking, kill me, I don't care. Take away the food and the money, I don't care. That is why Jesus is saying, tell my church to return to prayer and fasting. Because this will come when you go see water to drink, you won't see food to eat. Mm. But you take the mark of the beast. Well, in those days, perilous times have come. Yes. Yes. Perilous times have come, or the Lord has to remind the church. Yes. So they will hear. So that those who are doing uh, comfortable Christianity, one or leg, doing uh, flesh, flesh, anyhow, easy. Jesus said, no, this is the time to pick up your cross. Deny yourself. Deny yourself and follow me. Because the journey ahead is very long. And the weight is very heavy. If you do not guard that spiritual muscle and momentum, Satan will fry you. So, praise the Lord. He's not trying to scare anybody, but Jesus always prophesies for warning as well. And so, one is to confront, is to exalt, is to inform, is to do so many things, to so build up the house. Hallelujah. So, He just said, because He loves us, let us align ourselves. Let's return. Because at the end of the day, the world can't save nobody. Yes, Only Jesus saves. After all said and done. Jesus is the only way. After all said and done, Jesus is the only way. After all said and done, after all your qualifications, after all your degrees, after the marriage, the children, the money, the billionaire status, everything, after all the social media following, all those things don't count. Jesus is the only way. When we get to heaven, Jesus will ask you, how many social media followers do you have? How many times are you on Facebook? He said, the last days, many will come and say, Lord, Lord, in your name, we heal the sick, we cast out the Lord. Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, if I know you not. So your focus should be that the Lord should know you, and that you should know the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to say one last thing. The Lord showed to me a vision in the middle of the night while I was praying to him. About. I woke up from that vision at 2.40 a.m. He showed me a very mighty book. I can't explain this book. This book is big. In fact, it's like it's bigger than the whole world. Very big book. It looks like an album. Very big book. You know that shape of an album. And then I saw on this on this side, on this side, this side was heavier than this other side. You know, and he said to me, and I said, What's this? And he said to me, This is the book of the saints that have come before you and have gone. 
that is the people we call the cloud of the witnesses now yes. that are watching us to see what we are doing. They have done their part and they have left. So these are those that have done what I sent them to do. They have returned. Their names are here. And then he said to me, I have opened your own page. Because this wedding for me is very strategic. I know what the Lord is doing in my life. It's not everything we say. And he said to me, I have opened your page now. Will you do that which I called you for? Would you do that which I created you for? Or would you not? And I began to read. And when the flip side of that book, the, the other part of rebellion was just very little. I wish I had a book to just show it. It was very little. And he said to me, the remaining parts are the names of the other remnants, the other generals on earth that I am also raising to do one or two things in my kingdom. So he said to me, by seeing this book, I have just shown you that the end is very near. The end is very near. The end is very near. So would you lose your place? Or you would fulfill purpose when I called you. So that's all he said to us tonight to pray that where there's no vision, my people perish. So the Lord wants to ask you tonight, what is the reason why you were born? Are you living out that reason? Or you're doing your own thing? He says it's time to return to me. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is did you do what I called you to do? Did you do what I did you do what I created you for? For we were created in the kingdom for such a time as this. There's a there's a prophecy on your head. There's a prophecy on the heads of everyone here. Jesus is saying, do you even know who you are? So it's a time to seek the Lord for vision, for personal vision, to know who you are and what I have called you to do in my kingdom. And then it's a time to also return to the vision, the overall vision, which is the kingdom of God. We are called to do the kingdom of God. We are not called to do denomination. We don't do denomination. We are all branches. So this branch can be GKMI. This branch can be redeemed. It can be winners. Are we together? But when we begin to say, I belong to redeem. I belong to winners. So what winners is preaching is against what we need to be preaching. That is where we make the mistake. Yes. That is where we lose the kingdom mindset and mentality. She doesn't say, return to me. Because when I came, I didn't bring you a religion. I brought you into a relationship. I brought you the kingdom. What he said was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the kingdom of God talks about sonship. Sonship, not members. It's not about membership, but about sonship. Because sons are by. But members come and go. That is why when we do church and fellowship here, we tell people, we didn't come for membership. We didn't come for crowd. Those that God will bring you, we bring. We came to raise sons for the Lord. We came to raise daughters. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, go and make me disciples of one nation. He didn't say, go and raise me members. So he said to us, remove the membership mentality. Because that is the deception of the enemy. So keep my church bound. To keep my church bound in false identity. So we need to return to his word that we may know who we are. For the church is his bride. We are his bride. So the bride cannot be strained and the bridegroom is somewhere else. So they just say, return to my vision. And Jesus is the revelation of the vision of the Father. You can't know the Father, you can't do anything you want to do without Jesus. That's why he's the only way. So I don't care any religion who says there are other ways. That's the lie of the devil. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. And if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, at the end of the day, it is written, you will be condemned. I didn't say it. John chapter 3, 16 to 18 says it. So tonight, the Lord has given the world another opportunity of His grace to believe in Him. Because He already died for your sins. Past, present, and future. Hallelujah. So He wants you to return, to embrace the love of the Father revealed through Him. Praise the Lord. I just want to pray right now for everybody watching online and those who are here with me, Father. Thank you. Just as you sent me. Lord, I want to pray tonight that even as Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, that the God of this world has blinded so many that the light of the glorious gospel may not shine on them. Lord, tonight you're the only one who heals. You're the only one who delivers. Your salvation. By your authority, by your spirit tonight, Lord, we call upon your holy name. And I ask that by your blood that speak of mercy and grace. We begin to speak upon everyone tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you begin to draw men out of the pool of darkness. As you begin to save men over from the veils of blindness. And the enemy has pulled upon them. So cause them to remain in a place of deception and false identity. Lord, I ask that tonight by your anointing, you will rise men out of the pit. You will rise men out of the pit of darkness, of deception. In the name of Jesus, that your church will not be caught up of deception, but that we will stand and know who we are and return to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that 
must remove every veil of blindness that the enemy has cast upon anyone to keep them down. For the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But because I ask that even as we return home tonight, we are returning changed. We are returning lifted. We are returning raised. We are returning washed. We are returning sanctified and purified. We are returning a holy generation. We are returning a people who have their identity. People who have found purpose and who know who they are. Lord, we will not go as we have come because we know that in your presence we have been changed. So Lord, I pray tonight that you will give us vision in the name of Jesus. Give everyone here vision to know who you are and to know who they are in you in the name of Jesus Christ. That the enemy will no longer perfect any one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And that at the end of the day, you will say, well done, thou faithful servant. Thank you for all that you have done. Lord, we give you the glory tonight. I thank you for everyone and I release your blessings upon everyone. Yes, you are the one who crowns the year over with your goodness. And your mountains drip with abundance. Yes, Lord, let there be abundance in every life here tonight. Amen. Lord, I release the west wind out of your treasuries right now to begin to blow in their lives prosperity. To blow in their lives your refreshing wind in the name of Jesus. Anyone who has lost anything tonight, I pray restoration by your blood. Because you are the restorer. You said you will restore the year that the locusts and the cacaos have eaten. Lord, in the name of Jesus, anyone who is rising and falling, anyone who is weak in the faith tonight, let the power of your restoration, oh God, reach out to them and pull them up in the name of Jesus. Let the whole of darkness be broken up all men tonight. And let the power of your grace prevail in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, thank you for all that we have done today. Yes, Lord. We have done it by your strength, by your grace, by your spirit. Yes, Lord. And I say thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us. You are the one who helps us. Thank you because as we return, there shall be no casualty. Yes, there shall be no victim. Amen. Any demon, any demon that is waiting for anyone on the road. In the name of Jesus Christ, by his authority and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I command the judgment fire of the Lord to consume you and your networks in the name of Jesus. Lord, this one are sealed with your blood and I declare them untouchable. In the name of Jesus, set and touch not the anointed and do the prophets of the Lord, the church of the Lord, no harm in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your angelic host go with every one of us tonight. Thank you for testimonies out of this meeting. The Lord is saying to me that testimonies have been birthed by this meeting. You will testify in Jesus' name. And you will share the testimony before the communication of God's sense in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I say thank you for accepting our worship tonight. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to appreciate my beloved husband.